Hey Jacko! In today's video, I'll teach you how to display a video clip multiple times without making copies of it, in the Minch Resolve. And we'll also make this into a template so that you can simply use it in the edit page, apply it onto a clip and simply select how many multiples you want to see. And with this template, you can display the clip up to 100 times. Now let's get digital. Now in this example, we'll also be adding the border and we'll also be fixing the scale. As you can see, this video isn't scaled up properly, but it is here. Now I'll be using this video clip. It doesn't have any effects applied yet. So I'll simply jump into the fusion page. Now this effect can be done easily and quickly. We'll need a transfer node connected. In here, we'll be scaling the video clip. The size will change based on how many multiples we want to display. So if we want to display 10 multiples, so 10 by 10, the size will have to be one divided by 10. So it will be one tenth. So if this is the case, as you can see, we also have to adjust the position. So the center position. So as you can see, we'll need to use an expression. The center X position will also be basically the base value. So 0.5 divided by the number of copies, which in this case is 10. Let's see about the Y position. The Y position is a bit different. So Y position will be one minus, we could just use the center X value or we could just simply calculate it, which would again be 0.5 divided by the number of copies. Now, the first thing that I'll do is I'll add the number of copies to the transfer node itself. So I'll right click, edit controls. I'll make a new control. I'll call it clip multiplier. Then when you click on the ID, it will have the same name without the space. We want this to be a number. I want this to be a slider control. So it will be like the size. I want this to be an integer. The range will be from one to 10. And allow this also from one to 10 in my case. And the steps will be one, so no decimals. Now I will leave the animatable checkbox to one, but as you will see, this has an issue. Let me just find the control. I've saved it too quickly. So what you want to also do is put this to the controls and not the user. So you have it like here and you'll simply click it or drag it, but it's a whole number. As you can see, you can put in the decimals. You can also animate it, but I'll show you what the issue with this is. So now we need to use an expression here. In the size, I'll type in equals, do one divided by, click on the plus and drag it to the clip multiplier. And I'll do the same here. I'll right click, use an expression. This is a point. It will be 0 0.5 divided by, click on the plus. And this one will be one minus 0 0.5 divided by, you guessed it, clip multiplier. So now when we change it, this one, the first one will always be on the top left corner. So now this is fixed and all that we have to do is set some copies, or in this case, duplicates. So let's add the duplicate node. I'll just use one now to get the duplicates on the right side. So what we need to do is adjust the number of copies. So I'll go to the transform and pin it. In the duplicates, this will be an expression and simply connect it to the clip multiplier. So this also changes how many copies we'll have. And what we need to do here is adjust the center X position. So this will also be an expression, but here we have some issue because there is not a clear cut solution. So when we have two copies, the center X has to be one. When we have three copies, this one has to be 8.33, something like that. You can zoom in to get the perfect positioning. So the perfect positioning is actually this value. Then when we have four copies, 0 0.75, let's go up to 10, 10 copies. Now the value will never go below 0 0.5. 
and for 10 it's 0 0.6. Now what I have here is a switch function, which does work in DaVinci Resolve, but not the best in this case. What it's supposed to do is, based on the value input, the value in this case being clip multiplier, based on this value, in this case 10, this should return 0 0.6. So I've basically done this from 2 to 10. So what this line means, if you didn't set the clip multiplier to be in the range of 1 to 10, if it's outside of that, it will always return 1. But because this does not work the best in the Vinci Resolve, I've simply changed it a little bit. So now this does the same thing as before. We have transform 1, which is this node, dot clip multiplier, if it equals 3, we'll get this value. If it equals 4, we get this value. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And if it's none of those values, we'll get 1. So why do we need this? Well, we need this for the x in the duplicate node. So I'll copy this, go to the duplicate, go to the center position, click expression, the y value will be as is, 0 0.5, but instead of the x value, I'll simply put this inside. So now this value will change when we change the number of clips. Now with this fit into the center, let's see how it looks like. So this works as intended. Now all that we have to do is put the video clips beneath. We'll add another duplicate node. In this duplicate node, we'll have the same amount of copies. So simply also connect it to the clip multiplier, but this time we have to offset it in the y direction, as you can see, and this will be easily done. So with clip multiplier set to 10, the y value has to be 0.4 in this duplicate node, and this duplicate node has an x value of 0.6. So what we'll do is make an expression and this expression will be 1 minus the center x value of this duplicate node, which in this case is 0 0.6. So I will simply pin it. This duplicate node, I'll click here, connect the plus to center x. But it's not center x, as you can see, it's just duplicate one dot center. And this takes the whole point which is 0 0.6 and 0 0.5. And I just want the x value. To get the x value, simply type in dot capital X. So now if I unpin this and change the values, we get what we need. But now let me show you what happens if you animate this. So basically we'll do something like keyframe, go one frame forward, increase the value, and you don't have to increase the value by one, you can jump from any value that you want. I do hope the issue will be visible. Let's go in the edit page and wait for this to render out. I won't lie, I'm disappointed that it works. Okay, let me test it out on this clip. I know that this clip previously had issues. And we do see the issues. So this is something that can happen. So even though this expression works, and this one as well, when it comes to the Vinci Resolve and Fusion, it just makes me want to table flip. Because the Vinci Resolve, for some reason, can't keep the value when you do the animation like this, even if it doesn't change between the animation. Now in this case, it actually worked, but maybe it has to do with the number of frames, because this clip wasn't as long. But enough about that, I'll just remove all of the keyframes. So I've removed all of the keyframes from the clip multiplier, so we don't have any unwanted animations. Now what I'll add is some frame round, 
And if you need to change the scale of this media, we'll use another transfer at the beginning. And we'll simply use the size if we need to. Then after it, I'll add the background node and rectangle. I'll set the rectangle to 1, 1, so 1 width, 1 height. Uncheck the solid and adjust the border width. Now something was off, that something was the transform. I didn't reset the size, so make sure that it's set to 1. You should have something like this. If you don't, you will simply be able to adjust it. So in the rectangle, the only thing that will be adjusting is the border width and the background color. I'll simply set this one to white. And now with the transform, simply adjust the clip multiplier and see how the border looks. If it doesn't look right, you can increase the value if you need. Now in case we don't want the border at all, we can also animate the level so it's not visible. We could also do this with the length if you want it to be animatable. And in this case, because it's a circle, we would choose this icon so it's not visible at the start. So you have some options depending on what you want. I'll simply use the level so that I can hide the border if I don't need it. You could also do this with the merge by using the blend. You have options. So I'll simply select all of the nodes, right click, make a macro. Now the duplicate tool, because it's the last node, the output has to be selected. The transform tool, because it's an input, the input also has to be selected. Now let's go to transform one. This is the main one. The thing that we want to enable is the clip multiplier. Since I already set the name, I'll leave it as is. Otherwise you can click and change the name. In the background one, I will change the color. So I'll just have this solid color. But if you want to have everything, select everything that has to do with the color. If you also want to apply the gradient, so the selection would then look something like this. Then we have the rectangle. Ideally the background and the rectangle would be together so that we don't have anything in between. So in the rectangle, I'll adjust the level, but change the name. This won't be level, this will be show border. And we have the border width. So we have these two values. Anything else, I don't think we need to enable anything in the duplicate one or the duplicate two. And the transfer to I need to enable the size. And I'll just use clip size. So I think this is it. Once you have the macro done, you can give it a name here, but you can simply go to save as group, fusion, templates, edit, and this will be an effect that will apply onto a video clip. So go to the effect, give it a name. I have one here and I'll simply add tutorial at the end. And before I save it, I'll copy this path so that I can get to these files. As you can see, it takes a little bit. Now it's done, I can close this. Go to the effects. I have it right here. So let me put on a video clip. Put the effect on. Go to the effects, but open the inspector tab so that you can see it. So we have the clip size, we can change it, as you can see. We can change the color of the border. And because we've enabled this, we also have the option to disable it by using a black color and setting the alpha to zero. We can also disable it like this and we can adjust the border width to what we want. Now, do we want to animate this? Let's do it. So I'll animate it as I've done it before in the fusion page. I'll simply do it now in the edit page. So you click the keyframe, go one frame forward and increase the value to what you want. Just make sure that when you increase the value, the next keyframe has the same value. So now I have five. The next one also has to have it five. Otherwise something funky will happen.
At the moment, actually, everything works as it should. But if it doesn't, what you'll do is apply the effect to the clip, make cuts, Control B. I'll change the clip multiplier of this one to 2. Make a cut, change the multiplier of this one, and just repeat the process for as many times as you want. I also think that cutting the clip is actually faster, so you have two ways on how you can do this. And if you just cut the clip and have this applied constantly, all the time, without any animation, this will work. But I can't say that this will work if you do the animation with the keyframes. And now, because you made a super awesome template and you want to switch things around, let's find this. So this is the screen multiply tutorial. I'll open it in the notepad. So now, as you can see, we have input one, clip size, which is this. Then we have input two, which is the background one, its type. So basically anything between the parentheses is an input right here, and if you want to switch things around, you can. Now in this case, I'm pretty happy with how the controls look like. Maybe I'd just want to put the clip multiplier at the top. So let's find it. So we have the clip multiplier here. It's input 23. Now what I would have to do is cut everything, go to the top one. So maybe it's before the clip size. Just like this. And now I'd basically have to rename all of the inputs until the one that I've just copied, which can be a pain in the butt. So this is renamed. Now when I save this, this should also reflect in this template. Not now, because this one was applied previously. Let's put it on, go to the effects, and we have the clip multiplier at the top, just as we want. And if you don't want to make this clip multiplier template for yourself, you can also download it on my website for free. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, Jackals, keep it digital.